Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and with some thinking that a significant number of Conservative MPs have already decided that Boris Johnson must go, I'd like to discuss their reluctance to act quickly. Now, there are actually good reasons not to be hasty, but I'm going to talk about those tomorrow. Assuming no move has been made against Johnson, but I don't expect it to be. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to talk about the illogical reasoning that seems to be coming out. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So uh, first of all, to cover the two main events of yesterday, need to point out that when I was musing on what appeared to be a concealed security camera in the photo and other people thought the same uh, in the Sunday Mirror yesterday, it was just a curtain. Sorry about that. It was actually just genuinely just a curtain. It was really weird. It was this, it was like a smartphone image of a webcam image. And it was all very indistinct. But when you looked at a high resolution image of the room, it is actually just a curtain. Uh, the quiz still broke their own COVID rules, however. But the second main event was Boris Johnson releasing a pre-recorded message about the Omicron COVID variant last night. Was it going to mean new measures? Oh, is he announcing something new? Oh, his MPs won't like that. No. No. He announced that we're going to expand the booster programme and vaccinate, vaccinate a million people a day, which would require us, by the way, to double our best efforts so far. Do note that the people who actually vaccinate us were not consulted about this. <laughs> like the rest of us, they were going around going, what? Are we? Who? What? How are we going to do that then? But, but this was no press conference, nor was it a parliamentary statement. Neither journalists nor MPs were permitted to ask questions about this statement. Boris Johnson made that statement last night for one reason, only one reason, to give the newspapers today something to stick on their front pages that wasn't talk of scandal or rebellion. This was Boris Johnson putting his own agenda on the front pages and, depressingly, it worked. I was fairly distressed, not at all surprised I have to say, but fairly distressed nonetheless to see that as far as I could see, every national English newspaper, bar one, except the Financial Times, had it on their front page. You know, and also it's not even like they were saying, uh, talking about Boris Johnson neglecting to talk about schools or children. Boris Johnson makes COVID statement, doesn't mention schools or children. None of that, you know, not evident from the headlines. Nothing about how realistic this new goal was, just like, oh, we're gonna vaccinate a million people a day. Are we? No critical thoughts as to how we're going to achieve this when he hasn't even asked the people who would need to do it. You know, nothing, nothing about that, if we can do it. Um, and also, if we can do it, nothing about why we weren't already doing it. When the government have set so much store on vaccinations, we're told by the experts, vaccination's important. We need other things as well. We need other things, not just vaccinations. But the government go, no, just vaccinations. So why weren't you doing more? Like, the media keep letting the government claim that our vaccination rollout is amazing. It is not. The proportion of the population that are fully vaccinated is now decidedly mediocre. The booster rollout is going well. And, you know, that's it. The actual number of doses given out is going well because, do you know what? The NHS is highly competent at such things. But the percentage of the population covered is now disappointing. And that's because of government policy not to just let people who want to be vaccinated be so. You know, their original plan may well have worked if there was 100% uptake, but there wasn't. There's always people who go, I don't want to be vaccinated. No, no, no. There will be some people, you know, for various reasons who couldn't as well. I was talking to someone yesterday who had a, an allergic reaction to their vaccine. But, you know, it's... Uh, but if we'd have just sort of said, look, you know, we know it's beneficial. As soon as we knew it was beneficial for people over the age of 12, we should have just said, there's doses going, there's appointments going. If you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. You know, and, and, and we were so late to the party with younger people. And it is the gulf between Conservative MPs and the public and scientific expertise on COVID that presents yet another major problem for Boris Johnson, as if he didn't have enough at the moment. Former Conservative minister and one of the MPs who rebelled against Johnson in 2019, David Gork, yesterday pointed out that Johnson is in a fragile political position, like quite apart from anything else, because a lot of Tory MPs think he's overreacting with his plan B 
it's an overreaction according to them. But public opinion is likely to conclude that he's actually underreacting. And that is true, he is, according to experts. The transmission of the Omicron variant is doubling in now 1.8 days at the time I do this. Same in Denmark, interestingly. There's still a lot of nonsense talks about it producing milder symptoms. This is based on the limited data that we have so far, but those data are from people who are largely double vaccinated. So it's very difficult to compare it to previous variants because more people are vaccinated now. Being vaccinated, even if it doesn't stop you becoming ill, it reduces the chances of you becoming ill. But even when you do become ill, it again reduces the chances of developing severe symptoms. So you, you're more likely to be less ill. So when the raw data suggests lower instances of serious illness, like hospitalizations than previous variants, it doesn't mean that Omicron is milder. It could just be down and entirely down to the fact that more people coming into contact with it are vaccinated. In other words, better protected than against previous variants. But milder or not, however it turns out, we won't know for some time, the clearly much higher transmissibility still means that it's going to infect more people. Like, make no mistake, if Boris Johnson is arguing for taking less serious measures than his own scientific advisors are arguing for, on the basis, like, I can imagine how the conversation will have gone. His, science, his advisor will have said, no, this is going to be a right mess. And he'll have gone, OK, what if we vaccinate more people? Prime Minister, you'd need to vaccinate a million people a day. Oh, OK, we'll do that then. What? We'll do that then. How? Oh, we'll just, we'll just say it. You know, if it's based on that, we're going to be in very serious trouble. You know, and it feels like the same two reasons why Boris Johnson always acts too late with COVID measures. The first reason is he lacks in conviction. Like people say Keir Starmer is too cautious, and I think that's a fair comment. But how much more so is Boris Johnson? His default position is always procrastination. Making tough decisions annoys people. That's how it goes in his head. But if I make a decision, yeah, these people will be happy, but these people will be really pissed off. So he looks to make no decision in the hope that the problem sorts itself out and he doesn't have to annoy anyone. But the second reason is opposition from his own benches. The reason we have never been able to take preemptive action is because Tory MPs argue that it's not needed. Draconia, don't need it. We have to wait until the need is undeniable and the public are screaming at the government to act. There is talk about another lockdown by the end of the month. I suspect that if it comes at all, it will come after Christmas Day. But how will Boris Johnson be able to put us through another lockdown with an already highly vulnerable position? I think he's unlikely to call it a lockdown for the first thing. I think the aim will probably be to ramp up measures and we slowly end up in a, in a lockdown without realising it. You know, ideally while Parliament's in recess, without ever saying we are locking down. Even then it won't be easy. But we are in this position because the Conservatives are now in the thrall of lunatics. Steve Baker talks about Covid measures as being the path to authoritarianism and yet has supported legislation to imprison people who peacefully protest. It is a position that defies all logic. So are all these Conservative MPs hypocrites then? Like it would seem so, because it's hard to believe that people could actually function with so little logic in their brains. But the upcoming by-election in North Shropshire made me think differently. See, there are reports... So what I'm reading at the moment is a lot of journalists quoting a lot of MPs, not giving their names, of course, they don't want to say it publicly. But there's a lot of comments coming out because there's a lot of dissatisfaction with Boris Johnson. Reports of a lot of Tory MPs saying that they will demand Johnson's resignation if they lose North Shropshire this week. Why? Every bookmaker in the country has the Lib Dems' clear favourites to win now. Now, do bear in mind, sometimes the odds reflect betting behaviour, not just probability. They're not necessarily in the, saying the Lib Dems are most likely to win. It could just be a lot of people betting on the Lib Dems. But I'm still satisfied that the result is going to be very close. One way or the other, it's going to be close. What difference does it make if the Conservatives win it by a few hundred votes or lose it by a few hundred votes? It makes no difference, practically speaking. They still have a huge majority either way. They will still retain the seat at the next general election either way. Why North Shropshire is a litmus test of Boris Johnson's leadership is because it will show that Boris Johnson is personally costing the party a lot of support and votes. 
But the result will show that regardless of who wins. If the Conservatives go from having over six times as many votes as the Lib Dems to pretty much the same, even if it's slightly one way or the other, that is a disaster regardless of who takes the chequered flag. Oh, we don't talk about chequered flags at the moment, by the way. If the implication is that there are Tory MPs who will write their letters calling for a confidence vote if North Shropshire is lost, because that's what I'm reading, a sizable number of Tory MPs, not necessarily enough to sink him, but, you know, a significant number, are calling for this confidence vote if North Shropshire is lost. But the implication is not if they retain it. That makes no sense. If one of the safest Tory seats, one that they have held for two centuries, that's longer than most countries have existed. If it's even run close, it's a clear sign that most Tory seats could fall like dominoes if Boris Johnson is still around at the next election. Why does it matter in a tight contest which way it flips? So I really do think that a lot of Conservative MPs we just lack any sort of serious critical thinking on this. There are rational reasons why they should not want to get rid of Boris Johnson just yet. They may do. I mean, it could be that tomorrow they announce they are getting rid of him. Maybe later today. I don't think so, but who knows? But I, you know, if I was thinking about it rationally, and I'm going to explain it in a video tomorrow if they haven't already acted, I think they should leave him for a while. But, you know, you, 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 you hear about those... MPs from journalists, quoting Tory MPs, and, and although there are sensible reasons not to go mad just now, it's mostly the nonsense reasons you read about. So I do think we have a parliamentary Conservative Party that is at war with logic. Like, Gove tried to turn the public off experts in order to sell Brexit. Now, that was a, a, um, a pragmatic step. It was an essential step because it was hard to find experts arguing in favour of Brexit, so they wouldn't have really sold it to the British public without making the public mistrust experts. And there were, there were no experts at all who would thought it would give us an economic advantage. But it's like the Conservatives fell for it themselves. In order to get this, uh, this extreme Tory Brexit, Boris Johnson had to purge the Parliamentary Party of all rational behaviour. This has resulted in a Parliament of people who are paragons of double think. And that is why we're in, we'd be in a mess anyway. A whole of Europe is in a mess with the pandemic. No one really got it right. But we are in a particular mess because we refuse to take action early when it could save the most lives and be over quicker when we've got to take action. You don't need to take a severe action if you act more quickly. But because their ad logic thinks that they should react, never proact, Wait until the quicksand is up to your neck before deciding that maybe this wasn't the best spot to choose after all. And because that thinking seems to be widespread in the, in the parliamentary party at least, it will not end with Boris Johnson. It is possible that a successor will assemble a more competent cabinet. Not certain, but it is possible. But they will not have the sharpest tools to work with. You can only assemble a cabinet of what you've got. Changing the leader will not change the general character of the parliamentary party. Only an election can do that. And we look to be quite far away from that. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.